So you want to know how to photograph a newborn baby and you want to know my workflow. So this is my updated version, mid-2019, and I'm going to share with you how to photograph a newborn baby and my workflow. I always start by setting up, so here we've got the Paloma shell. There's a backdrop on here. There's actually several layers of backdrop. Um, and then underneath I use little pillows. Um, I have a video on how to play, well, where I place my posing pillows. So I'm not gonna go into detail. I have like a little blanket set up, little outfit, wraps on the side. Uh, so I'm all good to go. I got posing pillows within reach. My camera's here, softbox is right there. Um, I sanitize my hands to start with. I make sure the studio is clean. There's a welcome sign for the baby. Um, things are tidy. And yeah, I asked the parents before which colors they like. So that's why I have these colors ready. Then, uh, of course, when they come in, I open the door. I welcome them into the studio. Uh, baby's usually in the car seat, uh, either asleep or awake. 80% of the time, the baby is uh, asleep when they come in, which is great. Cause then I'll tell the parents where they can place the car seat. I'll ask them to leave the baby in the car seat for at least a minute or so. And then I ask them if it's okay if I take the baby out of the car seat and place them directly here on my beanbag. The heater is on. Here I have my baby stretcher, which is on. When the parents come in, of course, I'll tell them where the bathroom is. They can get coffee or tea, or I can make it later for them. They can sit at the table, see my portfolio books. They can sit right here behind me uh, on some comfortable chairs. Uh, I'll tell them where they can place their jackets, stuff like that. Then I usually lift the baby out of the car seat and I place them on the beanbag. And then with the heater on and the baby shusher on, I'll slowly undress them. Diaper stays on. And then I have like a little outfit that I put on or I just use like wraps. Um, but usually I start off with a little outfit. Most of the time the babies stay sleeping because I undress them so slowly that they continue sleeping. And uh, they're pretty much already lying on their back. So I might take a few photos from the top of them lying on their back. And I slowly like put them on their side. So you just kind of like roll them over onto their side. Maybe you place one hand underneath their face. I have like little teddy bear, for example, that I place in their arms. Um, so they're lying on their sides. I take photos from the top. I take photos from the front they've been lying on their side I actually turn them over on their belly place their knees underneath their tummy feet crossed uh, hands tucked underneath their chest face to the side and it's like the bum up pose so uh, it's very cute to take a photo from the side of course maybe close up of the face take a photo from the top you can take several photos in one pose all from different angles so yeah I start off on the back slowly to the side and then slowly onto the belly for the bum up pose. Um, then I actually go to the head on hands pose. I place this little posing bean here. I just slide it underneath. I untuck the feet 
and then I slowly lift up the baby with one hand underneath the chest and then one hand like on the top like supporting the baby's head and I just it's like a little little movement that they make from here to here on their hands and then I have like the head on hands pose so in this video I didn't share any camera settings on the photos in some other videos I do but mostly when I'm photographing a newborn alone I photograph with an aperture of like 3.2 and then my shutter speed is always 1 slash 200 in the studio and then my ISO is to match so it can be somewhere between like 320 400 up to 640 and then when I photograph I me mean, I can go higher that's okay but in the studio I don't need to and then with like sibling photos and family photos I, I photograph with a smaller aperture usually 4.5 to get everybody in focus I do a lot try to align them the same distance from the camera uh, but because I do that I have to increase my ISO a little bit as well so sometimes I go to 800 or a thousand Of course, if the baby starts showing signs of waking up or being hungry, we can take a break. There can always be a feeding in between. We can change the baby, we can change the backdrop. But usually I go from the back to the sides, to the bum up pose, to the head on hands pose. Um, when they're head on hands, you know, you can cover them with a scarf. You can take, again, photos from the top, from the front. After taking um, these photos, I will slowly move them back onto their side uh, and sometimes we do a few more side poses but like with both hands tucked underneath their face if they weren't as relaxed at the beginning on the side pose it's a good moment to do it now Then I tip them over a little bit more when they're lying on their back again and then I'll wrap them. My wrap is usually, uh, I have several video as well <laughs> with the wrap, but the baby is kind of like lying on the back with the feet tucked in, the wrap is underneath their neck and then you just wrap it over and wrap back.
you never I don't tuck it well I tuck the wrap underneath their uh, head and underneath their bum so their own body weight keep the wrap in place but they can always you know move out like they can always get their hands out or kick their feet out and that is fine because I want to follow what the baby wants if the baby's not comfortable on the belly I won't do it or I do it at a later point after they had their feeding or after they their diaper was changed um, same with the wrap sometimes the baby has been breech during um, pregnancy they want to keep their feet stretched completely fine like I try to follow what the baby is showing me in the in their body movements um, to end them when they're nicely wrapped I can lift them up and place them onto the flocati. I have like a beanbag right beside me it's like half empty so there's like a nice din in the middle and then I have the flocati and I just place them in there I might even like put like a little posing pillow underneath the flocati to support them in the back but they are um, like lying there comfortably um, of course babies can come in wide awake then I'll start as well undressing them here on the beanbag putting that little outfit on placing them on their back taking photos placing them on their side, taking photos. Then I kind of like skip the belly poses and I go to the wrap because a wide awake baby on their belly might be like a little frog pushing themselves off, biting into the fabric, uh, getting hungry and then they like start feeling their hands close to their mouth so they start like looking for food. So usually I do the belly poses sleeping, not always. Sometimes you have a wide awake baby and they're comfortably lying on their belly looking in straight into the camera, which is beautiful. But usually I skip it, I go to the rep and then um, we take a little break. The parents can hold the baby, maybe walk around a little bit through the studio or just sit with the baby against their chest, you know, with their blanket around it. See if they want to fall asleep. Um, if not, it might be time for a feeding. If not, we'll continue awake. We might go to like a prop shot of them just lying on their back wrapped wide awake. at the beginning of the shoot that we're going definitely going to do certain poses because every baby's different they're not dolls they're super fragile so yeah I'm just gonna say once again babies are super tiny and fragile and um, please be careful with them so first study photography then you know invest in good equipment good camera good lenses good backdrop material good whatever you need uh, attempt workshops so you get training on how to pose and photograph newborns because you never ever ever want to harm a newborn you always want to make them feel secure comfortable safety is the most important so you want to pay attention to the temperature and their blood flow and the anatomy of a baby and everything so yeah sometimes people ask me is being a mom and um, knowing how to photograph in the auto modus, modus enough to be a newborn photographer I would say mm, no, <laughs> because you want to offer a very, you know, a good service to your clients, a good quality product. So you want to photograph in the manual mode, um, have good gear, good, uh, you can use natural light, you can use studio light, but at least invest in educating yourself. So after taking photos on the beanbag, sometimes we use one backdrop, sometimes two. Um, and after taking photos on the flocati, I go to my prep shots. So I have wooden bowls, baskets, um, yeah, buckets, um, Ikea beds, uh, just props that I use. 
and I use them on different uh, flooring. So I have a floor mat and I have like some real wood in the studio. I have links in the description of the video as well, for example, to the floor mat and my backdrops and the real wood. I stained it dark and I have a separate video showing you how I did that. Um, so yeah, in the props, I have again my posing pillows, the beans, and then I use often like little soft blankets or uh, like felted layers or some like wool fluff to make it really soft for the baby. And then in a prop, I sometimes wrap the baby, just like a circular wrap like I did before, or I wrap the baby completely, maybe like their feet still sticking out. Um, and in the props, like when they're awake, they're usually lying on their back. When they're asleep, sometimes I um, post them on their belly as well, like lying on their like with their head on the hands like they did on the beanbag, but then in a prop. Uh, yeah, I, I have this little Ikea bed and I actually painted it green with some chalk paint and I have a separate video about that as well. Um, yeah, maybe I want to get some like whitewashed wood as well. So I want to whitewash it myself. That'll be a separate video. So subscribe to see that one as well. Um, sometimes I just use like a regular backdrop to post the baby on there. And then I still have the baby shusher on. Sometimes I bring the heater over. Sometimes the whole studio is warm enough so I don't have to bring the heater over. So here you see images like uh, in props. And uh, I like it because they really add something to the gallery. Um, I have a green wooden floor as well that I painted with the chalk paint. Um, yeah, and where do I get my props, my buckets, my bowls? Sometimes they're from garden centers or like antique markets or wherever I can find them pretty much. And then uh, we do sibling photos usually. So after prop shots, I go to like sibling photos and then uh, sometimes like the sibling is like holding the baby if they're like six years and older usually, like sometimes five, but like they are have their legs crossed, their elbows resting on their knees. Parents are on both sides. They're like holding the baby, sitting on the flocati something like that. If the sibling is a bit younger, I might have the baby in like a bowl and the bowl is in between the legs of the sibling. They can, you know, point out their nose or their toes and live, give a little kiss, something like that. And then I try to take a photo of the siblings lying on their back on the white flocati, taking the photo from the top. Um, that works with most ages. Sometimes there's a little bribery involved, but usually, uh, yeah, because we start off, you know, with just a newborn photo, sometimes they go out to the kitty's farm that's nearby to the supermarket that's across from the studio. We have a little play area here. I try to interact a little bit with the sibling to make them feel comfortable. Um, and then taking the photos is just a few minutes and usually they cooperate and uh, it's all fine. Um, and then we go to the parent shots. So I usually have the dads post the photo like this against their chest i like having the lights behind them you know they can be nose to nose face to face giving a little kiss on their forehead then i ask the mom to come in to stand across from the dad you know also placing her hands underneath we have the light coming from behind they have like they become this little triangle or giving each other a kiss or with the forehead to get against each other then usually the moms hold the babies like this and then um, we might do another like family photo as well with like the sibling standing on a chair beside it or when they're still small the dad will like 
hold the sibling. So yeah, I just wanted to add in that I also take like detailed shots of the feet, hands, eyelashes. I do have a macro lens, 90 millimeter, but most of the feet shots I actually take with my regular lens, which is a 24 to 70 millimeter lens from um, Nikon. And then I use the Nikon D750, D750, yeah, a full frame body. And I have the Nikon D610 as well as a backup. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. I always have variations. Sometimes people request like photos on a black backdrop, or, you know, with just the hands close to the baby. So we do that either like here, taking the photo from the top, or I have the dad wear this black um, blanket with sleeves. Uh, sometimes I take photos of, you know, the hands holding the baby's head. Um, sometimes I have special requests, like incorporating a wedding dress into the session, but fortunately I don't have that many requests. Um, uh, they mostly just uh, choose photos from my website that we want to um, use as inspiration which is great because then I actually have the props and uh, it's my style. <laughs> so yeah, always sanitize your hands uh, at the beginning of the session, in between, after you make coffee or tea for your clients, after you touch your phone, whatever. Sanitize your hands. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So that's my new workflow. And I try to put like lots of like fragments in the video of me actually showing you how to do it. But it's not all from one session, but it's from different sessions. You can always ask me questions in the comments. I have separate videos where I go more into detail on like where to place your posing pillows, uh, how to get a newborn to sleep, um, how to take photos of siblings with newborns, uh, where, where to place your light. Um, I don't know, I have, I have tons of videos. I don't have that many videos about editing yet. They might come in the future, so stay tuned. Um, subscribe to my channel, it's all free, and then you get notifications whenever I upload a new video. Uh, love reading your comments. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Thank you, bye bye.